morning, everyone. Um, there's apologies from Diana. We should have been taking the service this morning. Only her son's not well last night. So Reverend Caroline Brown has very kindly at the last minute stepped in to take the service because Carolyn's at Ford End today. So we welcome you and thank you very much for standing in at the last moment. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you, and it's a real delight to be with you all this morning and to be worshipping God together. So let's just take a moment to still ourselves, knowing that we are in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So let's just say together our prayer of preparation. Can you hear me okay at the back? Yep, very good. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So are the young people going out or staying in? No? Staying here? Staying here. Very good. Well, it's lovely to have you with us. So the grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins seeking healing and salvation. So let's just take a moment to think of those things where we've fallen short, where we haven't showed the love of God to our neighbours and ourselves. We confess our sin in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's say together the glory. Please stand. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The reading 
is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Spiritual blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good measure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of, rich, sorry, the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather at all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. And I praise God. Please stand. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard, Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod was on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, 
brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Loving Lord, speak. Speak into our hearts and minds this very day, we pray. May we know what you want us to know. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So, uh, Carolyn is doing a baptism this morning, and she said to me, no, I'm not going to use the beheading of John the Baptist as our reading. And I think we can all understand why, can't we, really? It's not, it's rather, it sounds like something more out of Coronation Street than uh, kind of out of the Bible, but some bits of the Bible are exactly like that. I've actually been to this castle where this party happened. It's um, a castle called... Macarius. I don't know if there's anyone else been there who's been to the Holy Land. Um, it's kind of, it's right in the middle of a desert. It's on a hill so you can see it from miles away and it's now a ruin. But it was in its day a complete marvel. I think I remember that they kind of piped water up there and they had flowing water in the middle of the desert. It was a kind of a really show-off kind of palace, a kind of castle, um, kind of on a lonely ridge just overlooking the Dead Sea. So it would have taken water that people couldn't use for other things. And they, we also went down into the dungeons, and the dungeons had iron bars, and, and he, the prisoners would have been attached to these iron bars. So it wouldn't have been very nice at all. So Herod throws a party for his birthday. I think it's quite interesting if we think, who has the power in this story? Is it Herod, who's a tet tetrarch, so he reigned in Galilee and Perea, from 4 BC to AD 39. He was the son of Herod the Great, who'd ordered uh, all the babies to be killed in Bethlehem. Um, and he looks like he's the most powerful person. He's the king. But in the story, of course, he isn't the one with the power. You can just imagine it, can't you? It was kind of um, a very, uh, I should imagine, there was a lot of wine flowing. Um, the um, family was deeply incestuous, so it was that kind of family, you know, it was, it was not good. Um, and then he makes this promise to this girl who's done this dance, you can ask even half my kingdom. So there's kind of, it's almost like a fairy tale, isn't it, when you kind of grant the, the, fair, the kingdom to the, the prince or to somebody who's done something great. It's a kind of outrageously generous promise, isn't it, to do that. Um, and then he, um, the mum, the Herodias, the mother, asks for it, its head on the plate. It's kind of like you're having a lovely feast, you're at a party, and suddenly this horrible thing comes into the party. You'd kind of go, ugh, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you go, ugh? If, if you were, no, you'd think that was, it's just horrible, isn't it, that that's what is happening. It was a rash, drunken promise, and he doesn't want to keep it. He doesn't want to keep his promise. He likes John the Baptist. He doesn't want to kill him. <coughs> but because he's made this rash, drunken promise in front of everybody else, he doesn't, he, he doesn't do what is right. He does. He's, he's influenced, and his wife knew that's what she wanted. And she kept scheming, and this was her chance, and she grabbed it. A rash, drunken promise, and doing the wrong thing. Of course, John the Baptist had been doing exactly the right thing. He had been challenging the powers of the day. So how does this affect Jesus and his ministry? Where does it come? Well, it's quite interesting because um, the um, disciples have just been sent out. There's just been a mission of 12 people going out with their bag, with kind of not taking anything extra, and they've gone out and they've kind of expanded in the way that they contact people, you know, they 
cast out demons, they anoint the sick and cure them. They've kind of done an amazing thing. Then we get this story of the death of John the Baptist. And it must have been for Jesus and his disciples. They must have realised, crikey, what we're doing here is actually very dangerous. Actually, the powers that be have got the powers just to kill people because they want to. So what's Jesus' response to this happening? Well, his disciples, John's disciples, before that, John's disciples kind of took his body and laid it in a tomb. So they honoured him. And Jesus says something. He says, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. Do you know those times when you've got no leisure even to eat? It feels like you have to grab something on the go. And so Jesus is saying to his apostles and to all of them, you need to rest a while. I wonder how we're all doing. I think I know that sense, do you? That actually over this summer, we need to rest a while. It feels like we've been grappling with stuff and it's been really tough. And that sense of resting, of refreshing, is just so important, isn't it? It's that's what we need to do. So Jesus says that, but of course, what happens next is 5,000 people who are rather hungry turn up, so they don't actually get much rest at all. So it feels like this happening, the beheading of John the Baptist, means that Jesus ups the ante. He starts doing things. He, up to now, he's kind of cured people and preached and, well, he's still the storm. But this is kind of feeding the 5,000 and then he walks on water. Those are the kind of next two stories. So bad things happen, the fear levels are raised, and Jesus ups his game. That's kind of an interesting uh, scenario, really. Interesting things are happening. Jesus knows that this is what's going to happen, and he has a real sense of what's going to happen next. So what does this tell us for today? What is it that we can take away from this reading? I think there's a number of things. Often I think there's a choice for all of us between fear and love. Fear and love, I think that's the, the, often the choice to be made. Am I gonna be fearful or am I gonna love other people and myself? Am I going to be kind and patient and all those lovely things? Or am I going to be fearful? I think at the moment our world, our country, needs people, all of us, to stay calm and to be kind. Those simple things that we've been doing. But I think it's very easy for there to be fear. And there are people who are fearful. I know people who are extremely clinical, clinically vulnerable that are fearful about what's happening next, fearful about what they can do. And that might ap ap apply to some of us here. And I'm not saying that fear is a bad thing because I think we need to be aware of what the risks are and being sensible. And I also think that there is a need for just a calmness, a willingness to be rested because we don't know what's coming next, do we? There's a sense of, I think we've got to prepare ourselves, and I think we've got to dig deeper into our faith, into trusting God and trusting Jesus, that God and Jesus holds all of this in the palm of their hands, holds each of us and all our circumstances, all the things we've experienced over the last little while, the good and the bad. How are, you know, it's kind of like, how can we come back? Take a deep breath, Be let God be God, trust that God has got this in the palm of his hand. Trust that we need to do our bit, we need to show love and patience. And realise that the things of the world, some of them are beyond our control, just like in this story, but we can do what is right again and again. So let us pray. 
loving God, help us and be with us through this next while. Help us to be your disciples. Help us to show your love in our day-to-day -day lives. In the strength and power of Jesus, we pray. So let's stand and say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, the true God from true God, begotten not men, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So please sit or kneel for our prayers. So the response for these prayers, when I say God of love, the response is, hear our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. Lord, words and actions have consequences. They can hurt or heal, build or break. Herod's rash words and subsequent actions had dire consequences. We pray for all people today whose words and actions have led to negative, life-changing results. We pray for those who've succumbed to peer pressure, all who've been pressured into doing wrong and find themselves living with the consequences. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for people of all ages trapped in toxic relationships, for victims of abuse, for the lonely and the elderly in our communities, all those whose vulnerability is exploited by the actions of others, and all those who feel vulnerable in our current circumstances. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the government and all those in power arguing about the timing of lifting all COVID restrictions. We pray for Christians in Parliament, for ambassadors, for pe peacemakers everywhere. May they speak your truths and be heard. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for Afghanistan as troops prepare to leave, for the ordinary children, women and men caught up in the situation there. We pray for the young people in Israel who are used as pawns in government-run schools. 
and for Nigeria, where the number of student kidnappings by rebels keeps rising. We pray that you bring them safely home. We pray for our own children schooling at this time, interrupted as it has been by COVID rules. Protect the futures of the innocent. Guide them in all that they do. God of love, hear our prayer. The beginning of July saw the marking of the 73rd anniversary of our NHS. We do pray for all NHS staff, that more doctors and nurses will be recruited as many leave due to demanding workloads and the exhausting toil of the pandemic. We pray for the sick, the exhausted, and all those who've been bereaved at this time. We also lift to you all the care workers. Twice as many care workers have died in this pandemic as is the average in the population, and they've done sterling work. So we do pray for them and give you thanks for all that they've done. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that it will stand and act upon your word without compromise. We pray for all who minister and lead us, for all who are all you call to speak out, that we, your people, will listen, hear and respond to the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray you will strengthen, guide and guard us. God of love, hear our prayer. And let's just have a moment of quiet so that we can pray whatever is on our heart this morning. God of love, hear our prayer. May your love and truth direct us in all things. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please will you stand. Jesus came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's share with one another a sign of peace. So now, I don't know if you still remain standing, but I know that the, the choir are going to sing for us our song, um, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. People sit down, very good. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through this goodness, through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. He is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praises. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we, find we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking the bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When he is bread and drinks his heart, he will the Lord Jesus, Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into the living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in heaven and earth, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So before we receive God's blessing, it would be good to publish these bands of marriage. So I publish the bands of marriage between Mark Allen Huntley and Carolyn Jean Mar Mallott. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the second time of asking. Let's just say a prayer for them. We do pray, Lord, for your rich blessings on Mark and Carolyn. We pray for their marriage. We pray for their wedding day. We ask that they experience a real sense of friendship and love and peace, both on their day and for many years to come, that they will know of your deep love for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are there any other notices? No? So the peace of God. Oh, please stand. Peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Thank you. 